Hey guys, I just want to say thank you for being patient on some of these lists. As you can see, they're coming out now. I know it's February 2nd. These usually come out in, in January, but January was not a very good month for us. And uh, so we're really just getting into it now. Uh, go check out the top 10 best games list. Here's the most disappointing. We got the worst and some many more coming. Uh, so thank you guys for supporting us here on uh, YouTube and on Patreon. It really uh, helps a lot. Thank you to our sponsors, G Fuel. Grab yourself a tub of Dragon Ball Z, Kamehameha. This kind of stuff gets you through some of these really disappointing and bad games on this list. So I want to know your own games. Uh, put it in the comments down below. We got 20% off G Fuel right now. Check it out, and I hope you guys enjoy the video. These are the most disappointing games of 2022! Number 10 Walk into While you. holding the umbrella. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how's that motherfucker not dead? Oh fuck! You just oh. throw a fucking <laughs> lamp at me, you piece of shit. Oh, I missed the soul. Soul, motherfucker, soul. Ghostwire Tokyo. When Ghostwire Tokyo was first announced, I got incredibly excited, mainly due to the enthusiasm of one of its creative directors, Ikumi Nakamura. Uh, we are making a new kind of action-adventure game. It's spooky. <laughs> but not the survival horror game that we are known for. We are very excited. Let's take a look. Meet the net. Thank you. Bye-bye. Unfortunately, she left the project before its release, and what came out was a game that had an excellent concept using spells to fight spirits in neon Tokyo. It looked horror, it looked dark, but unfortunately, it was neither. Bang! 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 <laughs> It's down. Okay, yeah. Pure action. No horror. And it turned into something that lacked any depth. It was a repetitive slog of cleaning gates one after the other. The mechanics never change. The open world feels empty. There's a lack of any variety and, and interesting quests. Oh no! The toilet! Oh no! <laughs> Should have closed it and have like a big turd there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the horror. Oh, like what exactly. were you expecting? <laughs> exactly. It's scary. Or what, what if there was a cell phone in there? That's a true horror. Uh. If people drop their phone in the toilet. The mechanics never change or evolve and the open world is empty feeling. A lack of enemy variety and interesting quests really put the final nail in the Ghostwire coffin. In a year so busy and packed with games, we could f hardly find the time to even bother finishing with this one. What the fuck are you? It's new! Bang, 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 bang! Bang, 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 bang. I know you fuck. Number nine. Okay, what did you guys think of Dragon Ball The Breakers? This is not for me. I don't like it. It's trying, it needs to be balanced out, especially with the survivors. It's like one shot, you're like dead. Yeah. And it's so hard to revive. Just, mm -hmm. no. I'm not having fun with it. Dragon Ball The Breakers. Don't get me wrong, a lot of fun can be had with Dragon Ball Breakers in the right conditions. Like, I'm streaming the game, an online personality, and I'm getting 12 other players willing to work at making it fun and run correctly. It, in that scenario, it's an amazing experience. So we actually have enough to beat up the villain. Let's go! Get his ass! Woo-hoo! 
dude, it's a fun game now. <laughs> Kick his fucking ass. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was amazing. This, is, this, this game has some good stuff left, yes. Kick his ass. He's down to 25% health left. Stay on him. Whoa, we did it! I told you! I told you a level 1 villain was not going to be able to handle it. So, on, so in this video, I'm showing you every single fucking aspect of the game and what could possibly happen. So in that fucking instance, which is rare, the percent chance of that fucking happening for you is low, but it's there. But outside of that, it is very difficult to get a consistent experience in the game. It feels half-baked. Basically, a mini versus one in the vein of Dead by Daylight. Only here, minimum effort was put in. And why would any more be used in a game from Namco Bandai, which basically just reuses all of its assets from Xenoverse and previous Dragon Ball games here? Four. But the graphics are awful. This is like a game from fucking 2001 or something. And I'm just so tired of seeing it. If it was a free-to-play game with its fucking, I don't know, battle pass and gotcha, then maybe um, you could get seven friends together and you do your own room, right? And you fight against each other. And that'd be a good day's diversion. Uh, but right now, I think the, the balancing is off. And it's just insulting to ask for... You know, money. I think there's even a $30, $40 version that gets you extra emotes. It's just a, a waste of money. It has a huge lack of polish, just awful graphics, empty universe, and a very limited a sweet spot where the game is fun, so it's hard to champion. With a bunch of microtransactions to boot, it's a live service game without the service part. It, it's the options there to purchase are boring. Eight Gokus, two Gohans, no, four Gohans, five Piccolos, seven Krillins, seven, seven Yamchas, five Tien. It's almost as if this is all fucking bullshit and none of it should be here because you're trying to force this kind of thing into a goddamn gotcha system when it's not really built for a gotcha system. You didn't build it from the ground up with the gotcha system, you're just taking the DBZ license and jamming it into the fucking gotcha system. It really ends up feeling like yet another low-effort way to milk the fans of the original Dragon Ball Z rather than an honest, fully-fledged effort to make something unique and true to the series. Still, I will cherish those few games where me and my private lobbies really did show off the best this game could possibly be. But on the whole, and for everyone else, I don't think the Breakers is gonna last much longer. Yeah, I, I like asymmetrical games a lot. We play them all the time, and this isn't it. Uh, this is another disappointing DBZ licensed game. Um, it's a twenty dollar gotcha game. It, it, like, if this game was completely and totally free to play, yep. I would kind of understand. Mm -hmm. I would still be pissed. But this is a twenty dollar game with gotcha mechanics where you need to unlock abilities in order to be better at the yeah. game. Yep. And so it's you don't you can get enough things to you know try try to unlock events, but it, it can be pay to win, and that's that's awful. And I'm so tired of yeah. subpar DBZ uh, licensed games. Number eight. Yeah! Oh, OJ pulled good. that bitch right to me. <laughs> no, bad. This bitch is awesome! <laughs> Overwatch 2. I actually had a ton of fun with Overwatch 2, mainly because I had stopped playing Overwatch 1 years ago, and I came in and was trying new heroes that I've never played before, and when I returned, all of these years later, I had so much fun because, well, it it's Overwatch. It has all of the same things that made the first so fun and successful. But for me, that's exactly why this game is disappointing. Because it literally does nothing 
else to push the franchise forward. It got so much flack before release for barely being able to be called a sequel itself. Overwatch 1.5, most of us called it. It's the same damn experience as the fucking original. Honestly, a massive patch more than uh, a full-fledged sequel. And at launch, it was marred with bugs, DDoS attacks, servers down for long periods of time. One kiss is all it takes. Falling in love with me. Requiring phone numbers and then removing that requirement, removing heroes like Mal and, and, and like Bastion, and 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 for long periods of time, uh, the characters locked behind the battle passes, and all of the microtransactions being so overpriced. One kiss is all it takes. Falling in love with me. As a way to recoup money after announcing that there'd be no more loot boxes, please clap for us. Oh yeah, the ten dollar for blue skin. We got it. We got to look at that. Baptiste, he's got. What a fucking deal. What is that? What is that? Is that fucking blue? It's <laughs> blue for ten dollar. Blue for ten dollar. <laughs> nice. <laughs> blue. Blue he's for ten dollar. Wearing blue. It's just a. It's like is that? What is that? Blue. What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? Fucking blue Activision? Come on, man. Put more effort into these things or drop the prices a little bit. And I. It was a rough launch, to say the least. And for what, really? I mean, a. A big patch to the game with some reworks, you know, uh, the the new number of players in matches. I just, I would need to give the PvE stuff, the story stuff, a try before even beginning to consider that this is anything other than marketing hype. As it stands now though, in 2022, this game was a disappointment in its release date. $20? Nope. <clears throat> no, hell no. $19. And all of them were garbage. She'd have to come out looking like, um, I don't know what I would, what would I pay that for? I don't know, but for $20, you can get Wrath of the Righteous, Icewind Dale, Neverwinter Nights, Polar Gate 1 and <laughs> oh 2 Enhanced Editions. Oh my god, uh, all of those games. And Planescape Torment, all for $20. And it's a uh, it humble bundle. It goes, some of it goes to charity, and that's, so instead of giving a company that uh, mm, silences yes. people who criticize China money, give charity those, those, th the money, and get those amazing fucking games. Yes. Number seven. Go oh, behind me now. Fuck it. We going. Boom, baby. What? What? Oh, fuck you. <laughs> oh my god, Dom. No, that's it. Dom is my favorite. <laughs> you never give AJ a good Gundam, you fools. Gundam Evolution. Well, I actually like Gundam Evolution and find myself having fun. Bro, what the fucking I'm MVP? Not no fucking wolf, man. What, 38? He got 38 disabled while I got motherfucking 49 kills and I can't get the MVP screen? I was fucking robbed, dude. I cannot deny that this is simply an Overwatch skin, <laughs> skin reskin. It is an Overwatch reskin. Just take the Gundam universe and plaster it all over it with mechs that just wholesale ripping off abilities from Blizzard Activision's heroes one for one. The issue for me is that the game just doesn't feel like mecha. It doesn't feel like giant robots doing battle. Your movement is so damn floaty and, and, and weightless. There is zero sense of scale here in its levels, in its map design, in the robots. Like the only thing, the only indication that this isn't just just some soldier with armor is is this <laughs> the little guy, the little truck. I don't really feel like I have a lot of weight. I need to turn the volume up. Get that <laughs> sound. All of your weapons lack any feedback and weight to them. It feels like I'm firing BB guns at enemies instead of rounds that are as big as fucking houses. You know, in some ways though, it's strength, a fast gameplay. I'm happy that it's out there, right? But once you get past the first few hours of that gameplay, you'll find it shallow as hell. Barely any modes or match types. In fact, after four hours, you'll literally be done. 
you'll have done and seen everything. The next few days and weeks are basically the same ass shit. For a free to play game, I'd expect better content and regular updates than what this game has managed so far. Terrible UI, little effort and many quality of life aspects, and the slow updates make this game easy to forget about. I am just so fucking tired of the Gundam license getting mediocre titles or reskins at best. This license deserves real effort, real budget, and real attention. What the fuck? What the fuck? I'm a match lever? I'm a fucking match lever? No, fuck you. You're a fucking match lever, bitch. Number six. All right, Dragon Lord Buttface dies and he explodes into a giant ball of farts and fire and his loot chest appears. Is that a fucking diaper? What? What is this? Oh, this is all trash. What? It's garbage. What? Is, what is this? This is a sword. This sword is worse than the one I got four levels ago. Well, yeah, that's because you actually played the game instead of derailing your experience with some shitty Easter egg hunt. You had to get all the loot dice, otherwise you get trash like all this stuff. Well, at least we got some sweet balloons though. Joe, I don't think that's a balloon. Here's my get off my lawn moment. I, maybe it's because I'm getting older, but I think Tiny Tina is becoming less funny more annoying, more obnoxious, and the writing just less clever. I need a dank rank. You gotta rank the dank. If I'm being frank, you gotta rank the dank. Oh, you need me to crank out a dank rank? Well, the frank would say... Crank out a dank rank. That's... that's what it is. Yeah, I'm not in the mood. <laughs> Either that, or maybe both of those things are true. I'm getting old and it's just not funny anymore. Oh, hell yeah! Fairy Punch Father, you're alive! Thanks to your badass riffs, you truly are a barbarian. <laughs> uh, and you, I know you. Come in. Magical loot solo number two! Bro, shut the fuck up, man. Shit ain't funny anymore, and then you're just pissing me off. The game needs more than lame puns to survive in this day and age. And on top of all that, the release was a disaster. See a pattern? Servers constantly shutting down, inability to play with your friends, which is the whole fucking point of a D&D &D adventure. Uh, offline connection, your current... Connection status is offline, young. Disappointed! Disappointed! A timed exclusive to the Epic Store screwing over Steam customers, the campaign can definitely be fun. The spells and melee weapons are great alternatives to grenades and, and, and future weapons, but it gets overly repetitive way too soon. It's short. There's nothing memorable aside from the villain, and, and that's not for the lack of trying, as this game tries so hard but just never land, manages to land many of its jokes. Queen Butt Stallion! <laughs> it's called Butt Stallion. Yes, I feel it. It's busy. You spilled your soda. 
Yes, I did, and it was in not a game that I can recommend at full price. This one on sale, definitely. And this game did try to pass itself off as the next full title in Borderlands, $60 full price. It's not much of a challenge, even at higher difficulty levels. It's got a weak end game and tons and tons of cringe. With NPCs that never shut up. I'm getting I'm fucking whites! Yes. Are you serious? Like, I'm near to the end of the game, or I'm beating a big ass boss, so it takes forever, and we get a fucking white. Are you yeah, fuck it, you? It just like, and when you're fighting higher level enemies, it, the, the experience doesn't seem more rewarding. No, like, it's about the same. No, it's about the same. So then you're forced to go grind on the lower enemies to come back to the larger enemies because it doesn't seem like they give yeah, you any it's more a grind, experience with the lower enemies. The loot is like fucking shit. Yeah. It, it's a feel bad because I, like, I don't really want to do this anymore. It's like, what's the point? Your mileage will vary, but it will on me way too soon with its many problems and despite its awesome premise and potential it failed to live up to expectations that I had for it. Disappointing. <laughs> Smile. <laughs> Number five. You know what? This shit doesn't look as bad as what people are saying. The combat doesn't look as bad. The story doesn't look as bad. It's got co-op. Once you get your hands on it, though, that's when you know. You realize that it's uh, empty. Boring. Some of the worst mission design. Crappy city. This looks like shit when you're driving. Awful driving mechanics. That car is floating. <laughs> Gotham Knights. A lot to live up to here with this title, the previous Arkham Batman games. Some of the most true to the character, amazing games out there with great open worlds and some of the best combat around in the genre. So what does WB Games do? Kill off Batman and fuck up the combat! If you're watching this, I'm dead. Oh. Literally, you take the two best things that makes this formula successful and you shit all over it and you fucked it up. Add on top of that a weak open world, technical issues galore. Suggest a quiet approach. If you're spotted, we'll open when in close proximity to a talent key. All right. I got it, Belfry. Don't get caught. Joe. What? Do we have a key already? <laughs> He's mm. doing it again. He'll do that all game long now. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. No, <laughs> no more. excruciatingly boring side missions and some weak versions of the characters we all love and you've got a very disappointing grindy formula. An absolute slog to get through with spongy enemies and uninteresting boss battles when one of your four central characters like the Red Hood has much, much worse gameplay and abilities than Batgirl, you know you've not finished cooking the meal here. I like her moves way better than Jason Todd. Yeah. Wow. What a okay, well. Gotham needs to see that someone She feels she more like the Spider-Man. Red Hood feels so weak. It's hilarious to see him use his Nerf gun pistols against even the weakest of weaklings, <laughs> low-level enemies. Fire, 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 fire. Oh Some my god. Points. What the fuck? Is are these airsoft guns? Jason. Jason, bro. 
can't even afford real guns. This whole place is gonna burn down. Welcome to Gotham Knights. Four unique characters should mean four great ways to play the game. Nope, not even close. It's basically Batgirl. There's no counter, you know, button. There's crappy dodging. The combat is just awful. And they, they lock off some of your character's best abilities behind boring and repetitive tasks. Think of Marvel Avengers and you're kind of close to Gotham Knights. It's not good. And while I do love the unique armor sets and the customization in the game that's possible, it's mainly the combat and mission design that completely ruin this experience. It's ugly UI, it's locked to 30 frames per second on consoles, and it's just got a bunch of poorly executed ideas. Gotham Knights is amongst the worst of Batman games without any of the soul. Flat characters and just boring. A well-intentioned effort that's a chore to play through so much that we couldn't even finish it. Living La Vida Loca? My ear, I now have a headache. Why? Number four. Uh, and then with that money, then I went to Target and I bought this Nerf gun. And uh, and then in the Nerf gun uh, was a marketing and then there was a code. And then I used that code and I came home and I earned uh, the Nerf skin for, for this gun. So um, yeah, I earned it. Yeah, you keep using the word earned, but I don't think you understand the real meaning of earned. What are you, what are you talking about? I mean, you know, you just, you just, uh, you know, you use one of these and, uh, you know, I, I, I earned it. I, I, it's in the game and, you know, I, I earned it. Oh my God. What? There's, there's plenty of things to earn in the game. You just gotta be patient. Uh, like, you know, uh, ooh, those cat ears look pretty good. Halo Infinite. How do you fuck up Halo? You know, Jeremy described this problem that we have with the ultimate challenge where, you know, you, you climb the mountain only to then find there's another mountain at the top to climb. So yeah. I think what you'll find starting with yesterday's update is once you hit the final ultimate challenge, it should be way less intensive now to kind of finalize and, and complete the step to get the ultimate reward, which, you know, if you're like me, it's late Monday night, and you finally finish your, your weeklies, and you think you're done, and then it's go play 15 more games, yeah, and you're like, oh, but it's almost midnight, but yeah. I want that coding, dang it. Yep. So I think that's gonna be really appreciated. By making a live service game that attempts to lock off colors and armor and pieces behind a huge grind of pointless missions and objectives that nobody wants to fucking do, and, and make modes and maps that nobody really wants to fuck can play on locked off and limited in rotations in order to keep fucking player retention going or some other marketing speak well that ended blowing up in their faces didn't it the body of customization content that we have on day one ensures that there will be millions of customization combinations for Spartans on the battlefield. Coatings offer us a unique opportunity to craft some hyper-polished looks and let you express yourselves in ways you've never been able to before. <laughs> Initially, receptive to player feedback, 343 realized quickly that they had massive problems with what they built. This new live service vision of Halo, it was wrong! I really want y'all to watch Actman's video on this because he perfectly sums up all of the different issues post-launch. The link is in the description. 
Everything was just delayed for so long. All of the post-launch content delayed even further. It was as if the entire studio has been running on a skeleton crew ever since launch. And a crew that didn't understand what made Halo successful in the first place. It's shocking, really. Modern day gaming. Dude, modern day <laughs> gaming. Proceed. What's that, Axeman? You expected this feature to work? Sounds like you haven't heard of a little thing called modern gaming. Modern gaming. It's like modern gaming kind of fucking sucks. Initially, a hero, right? Coming to save us after Battlefield's failure. You know, we quickly realized that this Halo, Coyote in Sheep's Clothing, a huge disappointment, and mainly the game how it handled multiplayer and its live service side. Let me make clear, I love the campaign. I think the game understood that part, brought back some great feelings for me. More. 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 Bigger. Love it. More. 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 It just dropped the ball in all the other modern ways, right? A, a service handled so badly that 343 now looks like hardly capable of even handling this legendary franchise. And one of the biggest challenges that we knew that we would have, and no matter what we did, we were gonna have this, which is changing Halo 20 years of box product models to a free-to-play model is not something that is going to be inherently satisfying for most of our players. Modern gaming. A real shame, a cautionary tale, and trying to stretch a game to fit a business plan or model rather than a creative vision. Fucking disappointing. Every time I get to a door, it's locked and I'm tired of it. Fine. I'll open the goddamn door. <sighs> but if I catch you looking at my ass again, I'm gonna me too you out of this franchise. <sighs> Number three. I think I should go first. I hear there's a lot of zombies in this area, super dangerous, and I'm the only one of us that has a gun. Okay, you go, what, what is that? A gun, Joe, duh. You no, know? No, that's not a From gun. before the apocalypse? I know how to use it, Joe. I've been training, look, you go bang, bang. But you have to like wear an armor proof, uh, bulletproof vest. Cause sometimes stuff leaks out of it, but you hit it really hard, you go bang! I Let me go it's first. Loaded. No, it is loaded. It's fucking loaded with power, Joe. Get behind me. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, you go by yourself. No, you're coming with me. Oh, There's God too many it. zombies. You gotta beat up all the zombies. Okay. Bang, bang! Ooh, gotta be careful. Let's go. Dying Light 2. Now, Dying Light 2 isn't necessarily a bad game, though it is in many areas. Come here! You get your ass over here right now, goddammit! You get your fuck. Don't you be a little bitch! Fight me like a man, Walt! You piece of shit boss! What the fuck is wrong with you? That's it. Somebody bring their goddamn fucking Molotov cocktails over here, and I'm gonna. That's our crap. <laughs> you can have fun. You can have a ton of fun on this game in its world, like a lot of games on this list. Did I sleep too early? I think I left too early. <laughs> it has solid elements, but for me, it just didn't come together as a whole. Clearly, towards the end, it was unfinished with one of the most broken and hilarious final boss battles I have ever experienced. What the fuck is coming from? What is he doing? He's dancing. <laughs> He's dancing on your dead body. He's like, oh yeah, I killed OJ. He's I killed OJ. I killed OJ. Clothesline. <laughs> clothesline. A lot of the issues from its half baked release uh, were bugs. Glitches, co-op issues, broken cutscenes, broken missions, boring side quests, a lack of interesting characters. Uh, not working with the... It's broken that... Uh, oh. 
Dad's asking if there's something radio? wrong with your radio. Sure, Rosario Dawson shows up and comes in and tries to do the star power, but even she doesn't, she's not able to elevate the material here at all. No, oh, don't. My sneakers are ruined. I can literally feel the concrete scraping my feet. We need to get me a new pair. What? She's serious. You mission? get your own fucking no. pair. Is nope. The next mission? Nope. Are you kidding me? Are you me? kidding me? What Are the fuck? We're, we're gonna go get her more shoes. What the fuck? That's the side Are quest. Are you kidding me? Shopping for new sneakers now. Is this some kind of joke or? Do I look like I'm joking? Don't oh. What? Shut up and follow me. Whoa! You just did this most badass thing. That's real. How dare you? Ah! I need to buy new shoes. Hey yo, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I really got sold on this narrative focus that your decisions will have consequences in the world. But it turned out to be mostly smoke and mirrors again, a few different endings that amount to some disappointing screams. What? What? Are you fun? Are you? Are you out of your mind? Text! I get a fucking text and then fucking send it again! To say the least, yeah, the parkour was fun and it was some good zombie killing gameplay, but a disappointment in almost every aspect. This is why I dread zombie games! I love these developers so much. I wanted for so much for it to be a resounding success and to live up to the hype, but it just didn't. The zombies feel like, I don't know, they're just there. No real threat. <laughs> Get you. I got it. Oh, that was just about one of the worst. Hey! Okay. I got infected trophy rare and scraps. And uh, 42 gold. Focus more. I don't know why the focus was on these boring ass humans and their boring ass fucking problems. Mediocre writing with paper thin characters, uninteresting elements. Why make that baffling choice when there's a much more interesting element than zombies in a zombie game? They're literally right around the corner. None of these characters so far do I give two shits about. It's like everybody's got a generic name like fucking. Jack and, and fucking Barney Joe. and fucking Joe. Who the fuck names Joes. herself <laughs> Joe? That's like the most generic fucking <laughs> name ever. It just simply wasn't ready for release and it needed a few stronger riders and a few stronger quests in a game to bring it up to the standard that we came to expect. Many more months in development. While it may not be as disastrous as, I don't know, cyberpunk, it certainly for me was a disappointment overall when it finally released. Like, I could maybe excuse some of the bad writing and bad dialogue and bad story quests and bad side quests and boringness if they had a satisfying conclusion. Are you fun? Are you? Are you out of your mind? Text! I get a fucking text and then fucking send it again. Number two. But wait a minute, that's that's all my tracks, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're really hoping to like bring you into like the Zoomers, TikTok, and Fortnite. Zoom you know, who? You know all that stuff. So Fort we have some, what? So we have some suggestions for you. T take a look at this. How about this one? All my homies got beef with beef. Uh, we really feel we can reach the vegetarian and like vegan movement. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. Uh, well, okay. What about this one? All my ilk drinks soy milk. That is awful. That's corny, man. Well, well we can I ain't replace, singing that. We can replace soy with like hemp milk, maybe oat milk. Right now, we've got a we've got a group. Oh, uh, it's two grandmas, and they spend all day on Facebook. And according to them, alternative milks are really hot on young people's minds. Look, man, I ain't I ain't about to rap about no soy milk, man. You crazy? All right, crazy. I was told not to tell you this one, but the studio says that. What if we do this one? I'll only toss your salad if it's organic. Bro, have you considered that trying to change my image is a, is a perversion of my originality and that you just trying to mass market me and change everything around? I ain't gonna fly with my, my homies back home, you see? You messing everything up, dog. 
the hell? I am not gonna water myself down for your fucking ass. If you don't like them big ass titties and you don't like hoes wiping the ass, you can get the fuck out of my studio. We'll just have to find someone else then. Goddamn right you will. Motherfucker, ain't nobody better than me. That's J-O-E of the Angry. The fuck out. Saints Row. Until only recently, this was number one on my list. But don't you worry, we are not done with Saints Row just yet. I have honors yet to bestow upon this game. But there's no doubt in my mind that it truly earns its spot on the most disappointing games of 2022. Kitty. That's a awful looking oh cat. Oh my Look. god, that's the best you could do? That cat's terrible looking. Have you seen Stray? That makes Stray look like goddamn PS9. A literal slam dunk waiting to happen. A, a remake, right? Updated Saints Row could have been fucking amazing. You see, while GTA carved out an obviously strong experience, this open world flawlessly, right? A serious one. Saints Row did the perfect job of going over the top, a parody of GTA, letting its players get wild, do crazy shit, big floppy purple fucking dildo bats. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. Fuck. Is that what you wanted? Is that what you wanted? Get away from me. Stop it. Stop. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Honey wagon septic avenger missions spraying shit all over the place. Insurance fraud mini missions where you hilariously ragdoll for money. And a cast of really surprisingly endearing and strong characters like Johnny Gat. So what does Volition do? Throws all that shit out the window to try to get more serious. And appeal to the Fortnite crowd, I guess. Uh, or apparently the Velmon HBO watchers. It belongs this to looks like a gang of Tumblr and Twitter users. And are fucking tired of the world trying to hold them back. <laughs> Those Life store is games. hard enough without having to deal with middle managers with Hells no yeah, talent Joe. telling you how to do your job. With obnoxious political messaging in, in the most obnoxious in recent memory. Even shit that I should agree with. I'm like, God, shut up. Please stop. You're doing this very poorly. You are more than a cog in a corporate machine. You are not defined by your student debt or your useless degree. You have more agency and power than the world wants you to know. But to realize that power, shut the there's fuck you need to up. Do. You need to be your own boss. You're selling hours of your life away for 15 bucks a piece. So what do I say to the person who wants to get paid what's this? And I'm fucking tired of it. Shut the fuck up. Zero creative chops. Oh my god, what happened to all the fucking cars? All but one car just <laughs> couldn't. <laughs> the game couldn't handle it, John. It's just lost track of it. It's, I don't know what. I don't know how to do game. Cars. What? It really couldn't even do its basic classic mini games correctly. So I'm coming. I'm going. What? That fucking taxi despawn? I'm so fucking sick of the goddamn draw distance and despawn for no fucking reason. It's actually affecting shit now. That was completely fucking ruined. You, you take one of the fun modes from the original and you fuck it up. A boat. A broken, buggy, hilarious mess at release. It had some of the worst scab replacement characters I have ever seen. These are painfully boring, shitty replacements to a perfectly good cast that couldn't even come up with good storylines to justify their own existence. While other games make, you know, do a remake in, in spectacular fashion, Saints Row is over here making a perfect example of how to fuck it up. It doesn't live up to the legacy of the series at all. Oh, there, all right. Yeah, that's uh, usually how I drive cars. I, I don't know about you, but <laughs> I, uh, Usually drive cars like this. What the fuck? 
Try that again. Oh, all right. Yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> oh, no. I thought you were stuck. I am. You fucking destroyed my ability to <laughs> ride vehicles. <laughs> cool. I guess I have to walk the rest of the fucking game, and I, I'm not doing that, seriously. The only hope now, I think, is to throw this version out and start again, only this time actually understand what made Saints Row great. The Callisto Protocol. After having played 2023's Dead Space remake, the Callisto Protocol jumped up from number two to number one, as now with the context of just how good the original Dead Space was, fully sets into my mind. Now I understand why Alex's number one most anticipated game of that year, 2022, was this game. It's developed by the original creators of the legendary Dead Space. Everyone was hoping that they could bring that magic back into a new IP, since EA seemed to lose their way stewarding the franchise. Unfortunately, this one ain't it, Chief. Oh, yeah. Stutter. Oh, y'all are seeing massive stutter. And what do you want me to say? Despite being one of the most beautifully, graphically beautiful games, extremely impressive in that regard. Yeah. Can't deny how amazing the game looks. The game looks fucking great. Look at those particle effects. Look at that face. Look at the, the sweat. Look at the, the biome. It's, it was fantastic looking. Graphics are top notch. Look at the individual icicles on the end of the fucking frost. It fails in not only its horror elements with weak, numerous jump scares that don't even scare in the slightest, but it also fails to understand how to build any real tension at all throughout this painfully boring, repetitive experience. How can the masters at this genre fail this hard? One of the worst aspects of the game is its combat. Holding right. Holding left. Holding right. Holding left. Holding right. Boy, he's gonna tire himself out sooner or later. <laughs> Holding left. <laughs> Holding right. Amazing boss man! How can this simplistic combat be the evolution or the missing piece that the studio was convinced would be a hit? It's basically a quick time event that doesn't at all mesh with multiple enemies on screen at once, locking you down into painfully slow and frustrating animations. The creative, uh, gross, skeletal elements of the Dead Space enemies are replaced with the most generic, 
enemies that lack variety or even mechanics. Fuck this! Fuck that stupid sequence! Fuck these frustrating dumbass fucking combat mechanics and nobody fucking bothers playtesting! Fucking locked fucking animations and goddamn frames and they're not invincible so then the next fucking the person that comes up kills you and then a one hit fucking boss kills you. It's fucking stupid. Each enemy had its own weakness and strengths before. Here in this game, they all work the same. You mash buttons before the penis monster kills you. Tell him fuck peace. That is fucking I can barely see anything on the screen. We're gonna brighten up. And the there's screen. testicles under it too. Really? Mm -hmm. There's two. There's really? Two balls. It's just a gross waste of potential. The director was finally free of EA's oppressive control. What did it result in? A misfire or a misunderstanding of what made his pedigree great in the first place. Fuck these controls, man! I'm the one fucking. You my goddamn shotgun and press three because the shotgun should be mapped to three. Just press three for the fucking shotgun. What is this? Press three. Press three. Then scroll. Then select with a, a selection right fucking mouse button. Why did he pull his fucking SMG? I scrolled. To the fucking shotgun, confirm, and now he does it? You, you know, fuck, fuck this game. I hope that this studio can recover, because honestly, half of the game is right. Get, get better writers, get more creative and interesting enemies, completely redo the way combat works, and try again, because I still believe the next Dead Space is right there, just not here. This was the biggest disappointment for Dead Space and sci-fi horror fans in a long time. And my biggest disappointment of 2022. But next up on the list, we're getting into the bad games. Here's where it gets really angry. Until then, I'll see you guys on the next Angry Joe Show.